I worked out for like six months prior to that scene, mm. and then I saw the scene, and I was like, well, <laughs> that's, uh, what, that's, I, I, what was I doing? <laughs> Do you expect us to believe you didn't know there was a shower in the bunkhouse and that you just were hoping that your girl would find you fucked naked showing off your translucent <laughs> caboose again? Hi. No, I don't think Jimmy was deliberately engineering a situation where he would be discovered nude. Um, I think that it, it was, uh, he was very much caught off guard and very much like, she's like really like kind of, cool about it in a way that sort of inspires more confidence, I think, later. But in that moment, I think all he's thinking is, get me out of here. It's kind of hard to describe with words how uncomfortable I am right now. I can imagine. I was started out with, like, soap kind of protecting my modesty, but then Did you in each take, on? I'm Tippers. spraying myself with water. So you that have... soap is, like, I did not have drawers you on, bro. Drawers on. You were doing the whole, just everything. Yeah. Just letting it hang really? out. Really? Well, they give you like a little sock it's thing. A little, yeah, it's called, it's like I a, mean, it's a, like a big a, sock thing. Sure, no, 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 it's okay. What is, it's like a sleeping bag. In the take, Jimmy's uncomfortable and Jeff is fine because you're acting. In between takes, yeah. that's pretty uncomfortable. Who hands like, you the towel and comes up and is like? Uh, under normal circumstances, somebody. Under these circumstances, just, nobody. Just, nobody. You just... Also, the camera was set up basically directly behind me because the, you know, like, as always, my butt is a joke. So there's a camera crew basically behind me at a low angle, kind of shooting up past my naked butt. In the cut, it's very tasteful. On the day... Not very tasteful. <laughs> very... The caboose is just oh. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The caboose is present. Shabango. Yeah, shabango is a, is a generous word. So you weren't a cowboy before the Yellowstone? What is it like going on a date with Emily? It's nice. In Jimmy's past, all these relationships have started in the bunkhouse, where there's not a lot of privacy, there's not a lot of opportunities to really talk. Not a lot of courtship. So this, exactly. This, like, first date, and, and things started out so fast with Mia. I'm his girlfriend. Also, for Jimmy, like, getting away from the Yellowstone, getting out of the bunkhouse, sitting in a restaurant with this woman is, like, it's such a simple pleasure. He has never done this in his yeah, life. Yeah, how does he know how to behave? Got in a little bit of trouble, did a couple turns in jail. All right, so we're telling the truth, the whole truth. <laughs> also, I think the most meaningful thing for Jimmy at that restaurant is that the cow boss coming up to him, the cow boss of this other ranch, knowing his name, speaking to him with respect. Jimmy. That's hugely novel for him. You know, out here, he has this opportunity to sort of to build back up from zero. Y'all enjoy your supper. Uh, you too, sir. Thank you. After four seasons of, like, putting my arm inside animals. Oh, yeah, no, you've earned it. It's fun to, like, yeah, do you, some, you just earned, some sit at a table it. and talk. This is every meal rip. This is where she gets her revenge. This scene builds to a head, and Rip kind of stands up to Beth and confronts her. What kind of childhood bullshit are you working out at the dinner table? That's where his simplicity, I think, like, really plays such a major yeah. part, because she's always about, like, there's always these complex issues, and there's always these deeper layers. And even in that scene, when he's like, then there's a table right here. If you don't like the room, then eat in a different room. Not everything, everything requires else this five, 10, 12 dimensional thought process. Sometimes it can just be like, if you don't like that table in there, and because it stirs up all of these memories, let's just eat here. It's wonderful to watch this, a character who's not simple by any means, but he's less complicated right. than Beth. Mm -hmm. He can disarm her being smarter than her own self and outsmarting herself with just a, a perspective shift that, that levels them. When that happens, you can see them look at each other and go, I know I love you in this moment. And that happens constantly throughout. Well, and also he's gorgeous. Not, he's not intimidated by her. Like, no, you he's, know, not, all, he's not afraid to say it. All the I other ones. I don't know what that means. Yeah, honestly, I don't even know what you just said. Rip is like, nothing that you're going to tell me is going to penetrate me yeah. in that way that's going to push me away or make me give up. Yeah. There's not a couple on film that I could root for more Life is plenty hard. You don't need to help it, you hear me? That table, that dining room table that they come back to over and over again has been like this sort of tr proving grounds for it lots is. of characters. Right. Jamie's in there, right. Casey's in there, Monica's it's sat there, Tate has sat there. It's it's also has ever a, sitting there. Exactly. Yeah. So it's so fun it. to see Carter then, this kind of new 
tentative family member right. on the outskirts sort of being thrust into that environment. Can I still have cake after supper? No, you can have some right now. Do you know there's four different forks and spoons on that table? Rip four. There's an oyster spoon on the table. Do we eat oysters? Name 12 forks. You have 15 seconds, and then we're punting to the next person. Can we get our clock to start? Oh, that's it. I love it's that right clock. It's right here. You that's see really... it? It's the clock is right here. 15 oh, seconds cool. is all? Yeah, and then can we just have pictures? A pug, a pug right here, and a pug right here. And they're looking resume, at me, and they love me. Resume, re resume the clock. First fork. Oyster fork. OK. Salad fork. Dinner. That's not on the list. What? <laughs> that was my only fork. <laughs> Back to you. Uh, a pasta fork. Um, I, I'll, I'll let that go. I'll say spaghetti. I think that's fair. I think it's I th probably th in the two, same neighborhood. Two? two to zero. Okay. I really <laughs> got my next one. What? Come oh, on. Four. Seven, six. Uh, fork in the road. <laughs> a dessert fork. That's true. That's three. What the fuck are we talking about? OK, that's you now. A serpent's getting... fork tongue. You're getting blanked. Go ahead. <laughs> that's good. Uh, I would say a, a fondue fork. Oh, no. Interesting. But that's not on here. Great. Pitchfork. A pitchfork. No. Nope. Uh, how about a souffle fork? No, we're getting lights. What would you carve with? Carving fork. Carving fork. Oh, duh. Carving fork. Great. There you go. That's one. A carving fork? I don't yeah, make up the rules. Fork. A, uh... Fork. What is this? A table fork. Oh, wow. Interesting. That's not a real Chair thing. fork. It is, it is a table. A table fork is a real thing. Chair fork. No. Um... You guys are missing one important ingredient. What do we use at Crafty? Plastic fork? Almost, but what do we do with it? A disposable fork. Ah, oh, there it is. Hot dog. Six. Three in the morning. It's very unhealthy. Hot dog fork. Two more. Tuning fork. Think old. Old fork. Oh, duh, old fork. Almost. Uh, Almost fork. Think family member, but think family members, but old. Oh, an uncle old, fork. An old family member. Great uncle fork? Granny fork. Oh, yeah. What is that? Yeah. That's not a thing. So I have a granny fork in my pocket. That's so funny I couldn't think of it. Here are the ones that we missed. So toasting fork, then okay. we miss extendable fork. Right, of course. And then spork. And that ends our segment of Fork it out. Fork it over. Thanks, guys. Let's that get the fork out of here. What do you got in the truck? Got a pistol in a glove box. Got a rifle behind the seat. The scene in the diner exemplifies, you know, their choice to do to do good, to put people's um, needs over their own, to put themselves in danger. Does that make them the good guys? Well, that's the that's the question. Right. Isn't it? I just think is, bad is, people is can do good things. Bad people aren't bad all the time. As, as these other sort of big pieces move, as there's all this like wheeling and dealing, there's all and these casualties. Moves, there's also along the way all of this violence, and it does really feel like because they sort of live this life, because they participate in this violence, everywhere they go, they find it. I was so excited about this. I mean, excited and also sad because Hugh Dillon, who plays Sheriff Haskell. It's been amazing to watch his journey. He's been with us since the beginning, and every one of his scenes, I feel like, yeah. the scenes between the him and Haskell. Kevin, that's a master class. Like, watching those two guys work together yeah. is such a treat. The only one that can shit talk JD. What did I say, John? One fucking day on patrol. One day. That's... He's been such a complicated character. His allegiances have right. been so complicated. Look, I am giving the man that used to be my friend some advice. Now, you are on their radar. For the love of God, find your way off it, John. His, like, sort of his own personal kind of he's, maneuver. Yeah, he's dabbled. Has been so good. Yeah, 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 exactly. He dabbled yeah, with the Beck brothers. And yeah, he's, he's done he's some stuff. So he's yeah, really he's been clean. back and forth. And then it's interesting to see a character who has been so strong, so complicated, be kind of brought so low and be so vulnerable. And what he's doing when, he, when he's dying is he calls his daughter. It reveals this whole other side to him that we've never seen even for a second. In four seasons, you don't get to see that insight. But in just a couple of moments, two lines, you get to see this like full depth of like, oh, more being more than the badge. And it makes like, you think about every other casualty along the way. And it makes you realize that behind every, you know, stoic, ski mask, yeah, behind yeah. every pair of like eyes, there's this whole other this life. Is, it's this whole other world, yeah. It brings consistency to the idea of who's good, who's bad. Death comes for, all for every man, who good, bad, call? and who, who cares what, whether you think you are good or bad. The show is like a continued examination and deconstruction of good guys and bad guys. Like it's based off of perception. Everybody's both. Yeah. Is everything okay? No, honey. 
everything's not okay. <laughs>